The Eclipse Countdown is on. Millions of people across North America will witness at least a partial solar eclipse on Monday. Spectators who live within the path of totality. We all love saying that word, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I love it, the path, path of totality. Of totality. Yeah. Uh, and tourists flocking to those areas will be lucky enough to witness the moon fully block the sun, experiencing the darkness of a total solar eclipse. So for more on this, Janet Shamlian is joining us from Fredericksburg, Texas, which is on the path of totality, and Janet. Can I just point something out? <laughs> yes. She is in front of the most Texas of Texas stores. I know. It's got like a big cowboy hat. Yeah, Stetson, cowboy boots, big Stetson. Stetson. Like look at the boots. You can't get more Texas yeah, I mean, than look that. Look at the boots. <laughs> it's just so Texas. It. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Janet, you're uh, traveling across places that are in the path of totality. Um, so what are small communities like Fredericksburg doing to prepare for what I'm sure is going to be an enormous influx of tourists? Hey guys, good morning to you. They are preparing because, whoops, got a little bit of you know, issue with audio issue here. All right. um, they want the tourists here in this town. Stores like this are hoping to welcome people, right? They want people to come in and spend money in Fredericksburg, which has a little more than 10,000 people living here. But to accommodate them, they are setting up green spaces and public parks that people can come. They've loaded the city down with porta potties and uh, they have food trucks coming in. In the case of Kerrville, Texas, they have one way traffic going in at peak times and one-way traffic leaving the town at peak times. And that's more akin to what cities here in Texas do in hurricane-type situations. Guys? So do, do we have an idea, though, of what sort of economic boost we're talking about for these small communities? Let me tell you about Kerrville, okay? A town of 25,000. They're expecting up to 100,000 people in that community. Whoa. Two and a half million dollars direct impact. That's restaurants, that's paid parking, that's hotels. A Hampton Inn was going for $900 a night. So, Whoa. yeah, it's significant. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, all right, so uh, what are the top tips for people planning to view the eclipse on or outside even the path of totality on Monday? Yeah, so we're um, driving here from San Antonio this morning, which is where we're staying. The big signs on the highway said, arrive early, stay put, huh. leave late. That's probably the best advice for everyone because the traffic's going to be so crazy. I also suggest that you get a pair of these. Oh, oh. Which are, you know, nice. you can get those personal ones. Where do I get where those? Where do we get those? Those and, are collector's items. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I seeing here? It is Stephanie Abrams from our oh, partners at the Weather Channel. Oh, oh, Stephanie oh, Abrams. I'm so excited to see you. Happy <laughs> Eclipse weekend. Tell me we're going to have clear Guys. Listen, there might be clouds, but I will tell you this. In 99, I saw an eclipse, and I kid you not, it was cloudy like dark clouds. It parted for totality. You Whoa. can't make this up. And then the clouds went back right after totality. So there's hope. I mean, we're hearing it from the queen. So yeah. hopefully. Well, wait, but hold on. From your so, mouth to the universe, right? Right? So, Janet, uh, you know, yes, one of the things, and left. Stephanie, I don't know if you can hear me, but, you know, uh, it, it, it's interesting to me that everybody's flocking to, like, Texas. And I'm like, I'm going to be happy right here in New York State because I I know we're not completely yeah. on the path of totality, but it's expected that we're going to have clear and beautiful skies that's here a, in important. New York. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, basically, uh, she can't hear you, okay. but they're giving us a hard time because they're all in the Northeast, <laughs> and they say they're going to have clear skies. They are going to have clear skies, and in fact, a little weather for you, that high pressure giving them clear skies is actually what's messing us up because around the high pressure, it's bringing moisture from the Gulf into here. You heard so, it. You I heard, heard it. Yeah. 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 It is Vlad's fault. It is Vlad's fault. I'm like that. Like the the, um, the want want. Yeah, I'm the right. want want guy. You may be there, yeah, but we have clear skies. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, what about travel? You know, you mentioned that you've been sort of driving through. Talk to us about how travel's looking across the country Thanks, for this Seth. event. Sure. Thank you. Bye, that Seth. was a special guest. That was so nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so travel is crazy, right? If you want to get an air, yeah, a ticket now to San Antonio, even with the projected clouds, it's going to be very expensive. And let me tell you, the bigger headache is rental cars. As the, my entire team can attest, like, you know, if you don't have a reservation, forget about it. It ain't happening. So uh, it's, it's great for these companies, but uh, if you don't have your plans, then 
you're kind of done. As Vlad said, stay where you are. <laughs> hey, right. hey, hey, Janet, is, uh, is Suvro your producer? He is. He yeah. is here and there, yeah, there he is. Uh, <laughs> Suvro, where are our glasses? Where yeah. are those glasses? I want a pair of those. <laughs> They will be sent. Right. I want, and I want yours to have your picture your on them. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Janet. Uh, we just took a stroll through this lovely town. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. And don't forget on Monday, tune in for our total eclipse of the Heartland special. It's beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern. Can I mention one more thing? Yes. Make sure that you got your glasses from a reputable place. Oh, dude. Place. We were like, did you see Inside Edition? No. So Inside Edition had an incredible report yesterday that yeah. we were going to do on What to Watch on CBS Mornings of a guy who was selling fake Eclipse glasses. And I was really mad because children would get those glasses and would be seriously injured. Well, so, my yes. my husband bought on Amazon, just got an email today saying don't use them from Amazon. Mm. So you, here in you New York, you can get them at the okay? library. Get them at the New York yeah, Public Library. Yeah, you can get them for free. You don't need right. to pay for them. Exactly. All right. We are more than one week away from a total solar eclipse. More than 31 million Americans in several states live in the so-called path of totality. But watching the eclipse could threaten your eyesight if you're not taking proper precautions. So joining us now is Mike Massimo. Massimino, rather. Sorry, Mike. I've known you for years. Uh, but uh, you are a former NASA astronaut and a professor of mechanical engineering at Columbia University. It's good to see you, my friend. Likewise, Vlad. How are you doing? Hi, Chanel. Hi. Good morning. All right. So uh, it's, it's kind of remarkable that we're, we've, we have you on here, Mike, to ask you how you can witness this mm -hmm. moment safely. But there are some people that may not know, that may not know including yeah. uh, a former president of the United States who, uh, during the last solar eclipse uh, back in 2017, <laughs> was photographed looking up into the sky without any eyewear. Yeah. So to avoid doing something like that, what should people be doing to watch or look at an eclipse safely? Yeah, Vlad, well, it's, it's not a good idea to look directly at the sun at any time. It can be harmful to your eyes, but particularly during an eclipse, uh, you have to be careful. And so there are things you can do to enjoy the eclipse. You want, if you, one thing you can do is you can get a, a pair of these approved glasses, right, these eclipse glasses, but you got to be careful because there are some counterfeit ones out there. So make sure you get them from a reliable source. More information on uh, getting these can be found on uh, Two websites. One is preventblindness.org, uh, and another one is for the uh, American Astronomical Society, AAS.org. You can look there to find out about these types of uh, glasses, but also other things that you can do. You can build a pinhole camera. That's what we had when I was a kid. They told us to do that. You know, there's a cheap, easy way to do it. You can do it out of cardboard. Uh, so that's another way to do it. But be uh, be really careful. Things like uh, binoculars or even uh, cameras. Those can be harmful as well, looking through the lens. You need proper filters. So you really want to take precautions because you can damage your eyes permanently by looking directly at the eclipse. How quickly could that happen? It can happen pretty quick. I, well, actually, you might not have symptoms until a few days later because mm. the damage sometimes is uh, will surface a couple days later and can be permanent. So, uh, But it can happen as far as looking at the sun, if the, how long it'll take. Just a few seconds will do it. So be wow. really careful looking at the eclipse, particularly when it's not, the only time it's safe to look up there and you gotta be really careful then too is when it's in total, the total eclipse and the sun is completely covered. But as soon as the moon moves a little bit uh, and you start seeing the corona, the, 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 the ring of fire around the, around the moon during the eclipse, that's where it can be harmful again. So yeah. be really careful. It's a great event. You want to enjoy it, but you want to enjoy it safely. It's just so interesting to me, Mike. Uh, when I was a kid, too, in the 70s, uh, that, that's how we, we did those pinhole cameras. I, I, I yeah. have very fond memories of being in grade school. And this was for lunar eclipses because there have been more mm -hmm. of those, I think, yeah. than total solar eclipses. Um, yeah. but, but we sat there, and I think we made them out of, a, uh, of an oatmeal um, container, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, and that's yeah. how I first learned that you should never, ever look at an eclipse, at whether directly, lunar yeah. or solar, without yeah. using something like a pinhole camera or special eyewear. So that's why I'm like, what are people doing looking at the uh, eclipse without that kind of eyewear? Are there people who actually yeah. use telescopes to look at an eclipse? You can, but you got to know what you're doing. If you're a professional observer and you have the right filters to protect your eyes, you can do that. But, you know, for most of us, we don't have that kind of equipment. And so, Again, if you can get an approved set of glasses like this or use a pinhole camera, 
you can enjoy it safely. But uh, for the professionals that have the right equipment, whether it's for their, uh, for their uh, cameras or for their uh, telescopes, they can get pretty, that's how we're gonna get really good shots of them. So let the professionals worry about that stuff and you can look at the pictures later and we can try to just enjoy it safely, the, the rest of us. And Mike, we know that you're a verified source on this matter because you actually overcame some eye concerns yourself to become an astronaut. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about that. Oh yeah, my eye concerns were different though. This is back in the old days with NASA when you had to be able to see pretty well without glasses or contacts. All those rules have gone away. In fact, NASA in the next couple of days, they're closing uh, the, the time for application. So anyone out there who wants to be an astronaut, get your application. I think it's the next day or two, they're looking for another astronaut class and they do that every few years. Hey, but Mike, back let me then ask you when I applied, you had, to, you had to see pretty good without glasses or contacts and, and I needed to go through some vision training to be able to pass the eye exam. But that's not a concern any right. longer. So, Mike, when you are um, mm -hmm. up in space, I mean, you're not always wearing protective eyewear, right? So what happens when you are closer to some of these celestial objects than we are here on Earth? We actually are, Vlad, believe it or not. Um, when, we, uh, when we're doing things where we have to look up or we have to maybe look at the very bright sky or maybe into the sun, we have, for rendezvous, like when we used to do rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope or with uh, the, the space station, we would have very dark sunglasses with welder's inserts. These were the darkest, you could not walk around with these things normally. They only, because you couldn't see anything. It really blocked, blocked out all light pretty much. So we would use those very dark approved welder's glasses in order to do a rendezvous. And when we were out spacewalking, if the sun was near us or might be in our eyes, we had, a, we had a sunshade and we had a gold visor that would come down. We could put down, we could deploy that so we could see what, what, we're, what we were doing. So we certainly did uh, have eye protection uh, while we were in space as well. And uh, it's, you can't, you can't, you don't want to, you don't want to make that risk of harming your eyes uh, while you're out there working, whether you're on, you know, on, on enjoying the eclipse on the ground or, or if you're out there in space working. For sure. Mike Massimino, thanks so much. You bet. Thanks, thanks for Mike. having me. You bet. Well, many are also traveling to see this rare event, which could pump an estimated $1.1 billion into local economies. CBS News correspondent Nancy Chen has more. In Rochester, New York, the buzz is going far beyond the beer at Warbuck Brewery. I think people do really embrace the fact that it's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Owner John Erlob's latest creation, Totality Black Lager, a limited edition drink to celebrate the eclipse. Love you guys. It seems like people are coming into town, they want to gather around something. Might as well have a beer while you're at it. Beer is kind of a social thing, so I think that's perfect too. And I think as people travel into town, they want to make sure that they can tell their family or their kids or their grandkids that they were in Rochester, New York on April 8th, 2024. Named as one of the best places to watch the eclipse, the city's population could more than double over the weekend, with three to 500,000 visitors. Hotels have largely been sold out for months. Your job revolves around the eclipse. 24-7, 365, at least until April 9th. Dan Schneiderman is the Eclipse Partnerships Coordinator for the Rochester Museum and Science Center, which is planning a three-day festival. What is the sense of awe that it inspires? There is something that kind of hits you at the heart. It's just an, not only a scientific phenomenon, but an emotional one as well. What happens during an eclipse? So when the geometry works out, the moon will pass directly in front of the sun and block it out. During a total solar eclipse, the moon will completely block out the sun's disk, causing not quite a nighttime effect, it's like a deep dusk. Hailed by some as the travel phenomenon of the year, up to 4 million people could journey to take in the eclipse around the U.S., with Delta and Southwest among those offering special trips to see it from the sky. There's been a 1,000% increase in Airbnb searches for stays along the path of totality, and Texas alone could see up to a million visitors. Experts compare the tourism impact to holding 50 Super Bowls around the country simultaneously. I've never seen um, an event draw so many people to put together. Rochester Mayor Malik Evans sees it as an opportunity to showcase his community, one that's expecting to rake in anywhere between 10 to 12 million dollars next weekend. 
What does it mean to you to be mayor of the city during this time? It's very humbling to be just a part of this history. Um, and I hope that it's something that future generations will look back on and say, wow, they did it right back in 24. They knew how to party. They knew how to have a good time. So that is a great opportunity to market our city from an economic development standpoint, but also as a place where people may want to live one day. I'm hoping that someone can say, I chose to live in Rochester because I was there during that eclipse and I decided to never go home. While on April 8th, a total solar eclipse will be visible from Texas to New England. If you're thinking of traveling to one of the places to watch it most clearly, get ready for crowds and high prices. CBS News' Robbie Owens shows us how much a glimpse of the eclipse can cost. From restaurants in Little Rock, Arkansas. We're bringing in extra food, of course. <laughs> Number one, we're getting more. To stores in Burlington, Vermont. Those gas stations, restaurants, that kind of thing, uh, they're going to be packed. Cities and towns in the path of a rare total solar eclipse are preparing to welcome millions of people who will be looking up at the sky and also looking for places to stay and eat. It'll be a long day for sure. Uh, it'll be all hands on deck. For those thinking of traveling to an eclipse location, get ready for blinding prices. Average flights to Little Rock are more than $600, Buffalo more than $700, and a ticket to Montreal is nearly $1,200. Coming to the Dallas-Fort Worth area will cost even more. Prices for flights landing here the day before the eclipse are almost $1,900. There is a cheaper option. Fly to Nashville for around $340 and then drive three hours west to the path of totality. However, lodging won't be cheap. We've seen a surge in demand for hotels. Hopper lead economist Haley Berg says some cities are seeing prices 500% higher than normal. A stay in Buffalo the night before the eclipse is more than $900. Consider staying at hotels outside of the path of totality and driving into the path in the afternoon on Monday. That way you'll pay a lower rate but can still experience the eclipse. Berg says if you want to go, make those plans now before the rates go even higher. Robbie Owens, CBS News, Fort Worth, Texas. I can barely contain my excitement. In just a few days, an estimated 31 million Americans will have a chance to see a total eclipse zoom by in the sky. And we do choose the word zoom specifically because despite the whole event lasting about an hour and a half, the sky will only be dark for roughly three to four minutes in most places because of the eclipse's tremendous speed. First, let's go through some quick science. Here's what happens with a solar eclipse. The moon moves between the sun and the earth, and that creates a shadow that blocks the sun from our view. The shadow is comprised of two different cones called the umbra, which is in the center, and the penumbra, which is on the outer part. Those who are in totality, who see the sky go completely dark, they are in the umbra. That's going to span about 115 miles wide. And the significantly larger penumbra creates a partial eclipse, which is going to be visible to most parts of the United States, actually. Now, the umbra moves at more than 1,500 miles an hour. And here's an interesting scientific fact. Depending on how far your location is from the moon, it can travel faster. For example, eclipse trackers estimate that it's going to move at roughly 1,700 miles per hour in Dallas. And uh, when it comes to Indianapolis, it's almost 2,000 miles per hour. You want to understand how fast that is? We can help you out. The average bird, for example, travels between 20 to 30 miles per hour. But let's compare it to planes. A typical commercial flight at cruising altitude moves at roughly 575 miles per hour. The fastest commercial flight ever, the Concorde, still, that's slower than this eclipse is moving. That supersonic commercial aircraft, which still holds the record for the fastest transatlantic commercial flight, is only 1,350 miles per hour. Now, there is one thing that is faster than the eclipse. That's fighter jets. NASA's experimental X-43A unmanned jet actually can reach speeds of nearly 7,000 miles per hour. At least it's done so during testing. And the total solar eclipse is expected to begin Monday afternoon. I'm going to be out there in the path of totality. The whole team is going to be bringing you live coverage on our special Total Eclipse of the Heartland. That starts at 2 p.m. Eastern. 
We are counting down to Monday's solar eclipse. As excitement soars, so do searches for flights that'll take you within the path of totality. Those searches have surged more than 330%. So Delta is offering two specials uh, and, uh, and one, they're sold out flights to witness the spectacle from 30,000 feet in the air. Manuel Bohorkas has more on how the airline, the airline rather, plans to give passengers a total solar eclipse experience. Uh, that's right, Anne-Marie. So Delta Airlines told us they added one of these special eclipse flights last month and that it sold out in 24 hours. So they added a second one. One will be from Austin to Detroit, the other one from Dallas to Detroit. Of course, those routes will be closest to the path of the eclipse. And what we got to see is inside one of the flight simulators at Delta headquarters in Atlanta is two of the pilots who will fly one of those flights practice the turns that they plan to do 30 degrees once on each side so that passengers can get a good look at the eclipse when it is in its totality. A lot of moving parts uh, go into making all of that happen. They have to time it just right. They're planning to hit that sweet spot of totality over southeastern Missouri, and that's where they have four minutes to give one side a good look and then the other side a good look. And they're hoping everything goes as planned and that that high level clouds will not be an issue so that people can get a really good view of the eclipse from all the way above there where you don't have to worry about the low level clouds that have a lot of people concerned about places like Texas, for example, where they will be viewing it there. Sounds exciting, Manny. Thank you very much. This coming Monday, a solar eclipse will darken the skies across the United States. More than 31 million Americans in several states who live in the so-called path of totality will be able to see it. The eclipse is a solar phenomenon that has occurred since the beginning of time. In ancient China, scribes tracked eclipses on oracle bones, which were made of tortoise shells and oxen shoulder blades. According to NASA, the ancient Chinese believed a solar eclipse happened when a dragon devoured the sun. What's interesting is that similar legends were found in other cultures and mythologies, including in Argentina. Greek historian Herodotus wrote that the Lydians and the Medes ended their six-year war due to a shared anxiety over the sky's sudden darkness in, five, in 585 B.C. And then ancestral Puebloans drew this depiction of a solar eclipse in 1097 uh, A.C.E., or after Common Era. It included one of the earliest drawings of a coronal mass ejection. What is that? It's a phenomenon that involves the sun splitting out or spitting out plasma and magnetic energy during the time that an eclipse is happening. Jumping forward a few centuries to 1806, Native American Shawnee leader Tecumseh and his brother used knowledge of a coming solar eclipse to convince their people not to give their land to then Ohio governor and future U.S. President William Henry Harrison. The question is, how did they know? Hopefully, we'll find out. And then there is one of the most fam famous solar eclipses uh, stories involving Albert Einstein. The scientist proposed the theory of relativity in 1916, which brought a new understanding of how gravity works. During the 1919 eclipse, Einstein's theory was proven correct by two different scientific expeditions. By studying the eclipse, the scientists determined Einstein was actually right that the sun's gravity affected how we saw the stars. The total solar eclipse is expected to begin on Monday afternoon. We will be right here in studio and we'll have live coverage from, well, outside of the studio throughout CBS News throughout the afternoon. Our special total eclipse of the Heartland starts at 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll be streaming it right here. Don't miss us.